Hello and welcome to Rathod's IES. Today in this session, we are going to see Canada fights of 14th, 13th and 12th April 2024. So actually, uh, we missed these, these uh, current fights. So I am going to cover very important topics from these three days current fights. And today is Sunday, there are very less number of articles. And even in Saturday also, we don't have this text and context and opinion page. So there also we are having very limited number of uh, articles and we are going to see even Fridays together. So even though this lecture is going to be lengthy, so please uh, tolerate me for today and try to complete the current fights of these three days. And first of all, I am going to take 14th, that is today's, that is Sunday's newspaper. So in this Sunday's newspaper, you have to cover environment and ecology related articles and as well as science and technology related paper that's it okay and one more thing is i want to announce that we in rathod science we came up with one challenge that challenge is 50 percent refund policy So what is this 50% refund policy is about? So if you are joining offline for your prelims come mains foundation course, if you are not even clearing your prelims, then 50% of amount that you paid will be deducted. So fees in this Rathod's IS Academy for prelims come mains foundation course for GS, but only GS plus CSAT. GS plus CSAT is 1,20,000 rupees and with your optional it is 1,50,000 rupees and if you are not clearing your at least your prelims then we are going to refund 50 percent that means 60,000 rupees will be refund to you okay so that is a challenge that you are accepting and if you want to join any coaching so think once twice thrice many times and join the correct institute okay and why we took this challenge because we have confidence in our content first thing and we have confidence in our faculty and as well as the timetable we are having and also the test we are going to perform and next one here is every day you will be having five hours of classes and after this five hours, we are providing study space. So you have to stay in that study space and you have to study. So for that also, we are going to give you the separate timetable. Separate timetable for your classes and separate timetable for your study space. You will be having regular practice test of your prelims. And also we will be having focus on your mains. Okay. So if you join our institute for your offline for GS foundation prelims come mains, I will give you 100% assurance that you are going to clear at least prelims. And after clearing prelims, we will be writing our mains. So with that time gap, again, you will be having exclusive coaching. Okay. So you will be not only having this 10 months or one year of coaching for your GS, and additionally, you will be having from prelims to mains, we are going to give you the guidance. You will be having classes and we can expect important topics from your prelims and mains for sure. So in that case, we are going to give you the guidance. So believe on us, trust me and you can join here. Okay. Yes. And now let us move back to our Hindu page and this is front page of today's Hindu so first article is Iran-Israel tensions cloud future of Indians hired for Israeli construction sites. So the issue is regarding Israeli-Palestine issue. But why here Iran came into picture? Because it is international issue, right? So now let us try to understand what is this article talking about. So this article is related to Israel. Palestine issue, right? Okay, so this article it is about Israel Palestine issue and it is a topic from our GS paper 1 under geography. So, for 100% sure, I can say there will be question regarding Israel map. 
this is 100 percent sure like countries to sharing boundary or water bodies or blue line or dead sea or countries sharing boundary with mediterranean sea or gulf of aden red sea okay so you can see the question from this is still and even some places like west bank and as well as gaza strip tel aviv jerusalem so in this place also you can get a question and next this topic is important from your gs paper to under international relations so here in palestine we have hamas okay hamas they are militant organization or the political organization in this palestine and israel wants to eliminate this hamas and here you have to see like which are the countries supporting israel we have us uk western countries on israel side and from palestine side iran is supporting okay iran is supporting in iran okay so we have mn related group that is houthis and houthis not only houthis even hezbollah's houthis hezbollah's they are backing iran in turn they are supporting this palestine or hamas so now here in international relation you have to remember one equation friends friend will be friends friend will be friend friends enemy will be enemy so here enemies friend okay that is enemies friend will be again enemy so here israel and iran they are enemies so what is the issue now i will be changing the color of pen and i will let you know why it is in use so in israel many constructions are happening okay so in this constructions indians they went to work as construction workers so how many there are around 5000 people but now what is the issue here is this iran is saying that we are going to bomb israel so in these sites indians are present so this is one cause of concern now that is life of indians so whenever indian citizens are going to other countries they are called as one word called as indian diaspora so what is that word called as indian diaspora okay so there is a issue of indian diaspora so here this indian diaspora is very important for indian government okay so because of this india is thinking like how can we save this lives of indians who already went to israel to work in construction sites because of this issue of iran's attack in israel so these are the some important things that you have to remember and this is the one like basics or the background regarding what is happening now so now let us see this article in detail let us see the notes so why it is in news because war clouds between iran and israel have cast a shadow over the future of more than 5000 indians and who have been recruited for construction work in israel so for construction work in israel there are about 5000 indians who have been recruited so indian government is thinking about the future of these 5000 workers and apart from this her ministry of excel affairs asked all indians not to travel to iran or israel without future notice so without any future notice which is released by the government so is indian government is saying that israel uh, indians they should not go to israel or this iran okay because the tensions are going on between these two countries and recently what happened bombing happened okay so because of this this is the news and if you see what is this israel aim so this is the very important thing that you have to see so what is the aim of israel so israel want to dismantle this hamas in this palestinian and next one is israel want to release hostages and israel want to neutralize the threats to its security okay so because of this it is doing military actions in gaza strip and even strikes in other regions where this hamas are located 
And next, if you're talking about another side, we have Hamas. So Hamas, they are seeking the challenge, challenging of this Israeli policies and actions in the Gaza Strip and West Bank. Because in this Gaza Strip and West Bank, so we can see this Hamas are present. And this Hamas, they are Palestinian Islamist political organization and even a military group in this Palestine and has been involved in the long-standing conflict with Israel. So this is the thing which is going on. And if you are seeing about Iran, so Iran is backing various anti-Israel non-state actors in the West Asia. For example, it is having support from Hamas of uh, Palestine and Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, Houthis from Yemen, and as well as uh, uh, Shia militants from the Syria and as well as Iraq. So from all these areas, so Iran is getting support. And Iran, which is having an aim to extend its influence in the region, okay, wants to oppose US and as well as Israeli interests. So actually, if you see Iran and is US, so they are both enemy countries. So actually, why? Because because of this JCPO, a Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. So it is also called as Iran's nuclear deal of 2015 and US came out of this Iran's nuclear deal. Okay, so these are some important things that you have to know. And now let us see the map and let us try to understand the regional conflicts which are happening in this West Asia. So I hope you can see the map here, right? So this pink color part is our Israel. So actually Hezbollah rebels which are attacking this Israel from Lebanon. So from Lebanon, so from here. I will zoom in, okay, you can see. So this pink color part is Israel, so this is Lebanon. So from Lebanon here Hezbollah, they are attacking Israel. So between Israel and Lebanon, we have one line called as blue line. It is very important for your prelims. Blue line, it is present in which and which country? That is Israel and Lebanon. Okay. And next, here if you see the other countries, here we have Syria. So in Syria, also always we can see like issues going on in Syria. And one important area you have to remember is Golan Heights from this Syria. Okay. And here we have Egypt. And here we have Red Sea. And this part is our Mediterranean Sea. And here we have Iraq and here we have Iran. Okay, Iran, Iraq, they are getting support to this Palestinians. And here we have Yemen. So Yemen also supporting Iran. So Iran actually it is not having the direct boundary with Red Sea, but it is controlling Red Sea with the help of this Yemen. So in Yemen we have this group called as Houthis or Houthi rebels from Yemen, they are attacking the vessels or the ships which are moving in this Red Sea and Arabian Sea. So Iran is getting support from Yemen which is located here. And if you see here Pakistan, so Pakistan and Iran they both are enemies. So here Pakistan and Iran they are having issues. So Pakistan is striking the location, strikes the locations in Iran. So here Pakistan is saying that there are some connections to support uh, the separatist group which are present in Iran and Iran also bombing locations in Syria and Pakistan siding connection with this Jais Ad Adil and as an Islamic state. So in this way here, so the issues are going on in this, in this West Asia. So this is very important. And if you move on to another image, so this yellow color part is our Israel. And here you can see this green color portions. So green color portions are nothing but Palestinian territories. So here we have Gaza Strip and here we have West Bank and this is Dead Sea. So you can get a question like Dead Sea, it is present between the border of which and which countries that is Israel and as well as Jordan. It is very important. And this Golan Heights which is present here. Okay, so you have to see this also. Clear? So these are the very important map details that you have to know from this article point of view. And now let us go on to our Hindu PDF. 
okay so this is the first page and there is nothing much important in the city page you can simply skip and you can move on to this uh, states page okay so leave this classifieds unless and until you are searching for marriage yes here you can see one nice image so this is image of vishu okay vishu so on this festival people they are going for shoppings for buying idols of krishna so here this article is important from your art and culture point of view so now let us see some basic facts regarding this vishu so actually this vishu it is like a telugu calendar or like telugu hindu festival so not telugu so it is hindu festival it is a new year festival of hindus okay so you have to see like which state so recently in telugu okay in telugu states we celebrate ugadi it is like a new year so in the same way in the southern states of tamil nadu and as well as karnataka region in this uh, kerala region they are celebrating this new year that is called as vishu okay so don't confuse with this telugu telugu it is called as ugadi and here in kerala in karnataka region and in the tamil nadu region it is called as vishu so what is this vishu vishu is a hindu festival and it is celebrated in indian states of kerala and tulu region of karnataka and mahe districts of uh, like union territory of pondicherry and next one is some areas of tamil nadu so they are celebrating this hindu new year festival that is vishu and this festival which marks the first day of madam that is the ninth month in the solar calendar which is followed in kerala and actually this vishu arrangement typically includes an image of lord krishna so they will be offering prayers to this deity of lord krishna so that is very important and now let us move on to next page of your hindu yes here you can see one article that is the cradle bond of murya tribe so whenever there is any tribe in news you have to make a list of tribe and from which state they belongs to because there is high chance of getting question regarding this as well so as in 2014 there was one such type of question regarding tribe and state they belongs to in your geography in your prelims so there is a high chance of getting this and i like this article because you know recently i had twins like there are around 10 months so recently they completed the 10 months and they ended into 11 months so after after i read this article i was in a trance like why didn't i do this okay to increase the bond between the father and the kids but i missed this of course um, there was no cradle ceremony in our community so i missed that ceremony as well so here this article is saying that actually these murya tribe they are settled in reserve forest of ap that means so these tribe they are from ap and they are practicing one custom that is the custom of new born father so father should weave a bamboo basket for a baby to sleep in for some months and then they keep for life so they will be saving that okay so you can see image with a cradle a uh, cradle and the baby and this cradle will be made by kids father okay because it is made up of bamboo and normally this tribal people living in the forest and they will be going for a collecting of minor forest produce because their livelihood will be dependent on that right and they will be going into the forest in search of firewood or anything okay so because of this this bamboo cradles will be easy to carry and while you are doing work so they will be uh, hanging this cradle to a tree so that they can do the work and they can take the babies but unfortunately i want to share my experience i am coming to this offline office and i am coming around 8 o'clock and i will be leaving around by 6:30 to 7 pm so there is nothing like this like a facility that i am having so that i am not bringing my child my children wherever i am working so i am missing my children a lot okay so after this 
after seeing this article i feel that no i'm missing my kids a lot okay yeah and now let us move on to another article so most of the articles are political articles so there is no need of going through that and even leave this election page also and in this uh, page you can see one important keyword that is nhrc nhrc flags violation of human rights in this sandesh kali so actually we are not focusing on what is this issue everything so actually there is violation of human rights happened and there were several instances of atrocities that are happening so because of this yes nhrc is saying that yes there is violation of human rights so here you have to see some dimensions that is nhrc is nothing but national human rights commission so you have to see like whether it is a constitutional body or like non constitutional body okay actually this nhrc it is a non constitutional body so you have to see like which act which act led to the establishment of this nhrc and you have to see like what are the functions okay what are the functions and you have to see like what is the mandate what is the role what are the challenges and you have to see like who are the members you have to see like who are the members and not only that you have to see like tenure eligibility removal etc so these are very important from your polity point of view and when you are talking about any acts that will comes under your part of governance but here this constitutional body is a non constitutional body so this comes under your polity that thing you can directly read in your m lakshmi kant book okay clear and now let us move on to other important articles so in this business page you can see there is one article that is fiis investments in real estate fell 55 percentage so the keyword is ffi that is foreign institutional investment so if we are talking about investments we have two types of investments so one is fdi next one is fpi foreign portfolio investment or foreign institutional investment so here what are the dimensions you have to see fdi is nothing but foreign direct investment and fpi is foreign portfolio or like foreign institutional investment so you have to see what are the differences okay you have to see what are the differences and please let me know which is good and which will leads to development of the country either fii or fdi please let me know the answer in the comment box and you have to see like which investments will bring technology and which investment will leads to growth and development which investment leads to increasing of employment opportunity okay so please let me know what is the answer for that question clear and this topic is important for your economy which comes under your gs paper 3 so from gs paper 3 this article is important and you can directly move on to your science page so in your science page you can see there are two articles which are very much relevant so first one it is about concurrent heat waves and sea level rise post threat to coastlines and if you're talking about coastlines so as you all know that you are having different continents and we have continents on one side and we have oceans so we have five major oceans so which are there so we have pacific ocean atlantic arctic indian ocean 
and southern ocean so one important thing that you have to remember is all the oceans are interconnected okay so all the oceans are interconnected that means in one region whenever there is increasing of water level that will be carried away right so what are the factors so we have factors like ocean currents winds and we have coriolis force so like that so there are different factors that are leading to the movement of water from one area wherever there is increasing of sea level rise to other areas and even slope is also one important thing that you have to see so what is the thing here is because of heat waves because of heat waves what is happening melting of glaciers especially arctic melting is happening so especially arctic melting is happening so because of this there is increasing of sea level or we can see like sea level rise so because of this increasing of rising of sea level obviously it is having impact on coast lines so coastal people will be get affected the most okay so i want to demonstrate one more example so that you can understand what is going to be impact so as you all know that india is sharing very long coastline and please let me know like which are the states sharing the coastline with india and which is the state in india which is sharing longest coastline okay so please let me know your answer in the comment box and what happens so whenever there is like increasing of sea level so coastline will be get affected so actually the people who are living in this region they will be moving inside okay they will be moving into interior side so when our people they started moving towards interior side that will be causes socio economic problems and so no that will cause a socio economic problems sometimes it causes communal violence and regionalism concept will comes into picture and again sun sons of soil preference so almost and there will be also increasing of population in central part and so that we can see like issues of migration okay and challenges of agriculture and food security and also internal security issues increasing of crimes so all these or the further issues will be there okay so in this way you have to think and now let us see the notes so this article says that because of concurrent occurrence like continuous occurrence of heat waves and we can see like extreme short term sea level rise is happening so because of this coastal locations they are significantly uh, increasing like 1998 and 2017 so when compared to the preceding 20 years so there is increasing of sea level rise at to temperature that we are seeing so because of this the most of this coastal people they are vulnerable and if you see the details of this study which says that so these events they may be five times more likely to be occurring between 2025 and 2049 and we can see like because of high emissions every day so this type of events may be increasing in our future and apart from this so this events are called as concurrent heat wave and extreme sea level event okay and this event it is like a heat wave and extreme short term sea level rise which occurs at the same coastal location over the same period of time and this can pose a very serious threat to coastal communities because most of this coastal communities they will be depending on the fishing fishing will be their livelihood so whenever there is increasing of the sea level rise so that will be affecting their uh, livelihood 
and not only that their houses will be inundated and there will be increase in the spread of uh, diseases like communicable diseases so it is also having the impact on their health loss of life loss of property yes or no yes right and next one is so here this study which also says that countries in the tropical areas they are going to be more severely affected okay countries in this tropical areas they are going to be severely affected that many of these countries they are low or middle income countries which may struggle to cope with these effects so effect will be less in this temperate regions compared to that of this tropical regions and what is this heat wave maritime heat wave so what happens here is so it is like an extreme weather event so this maritime heat wave which occurs when the surface temperature of a particular region of sea rises by around 3 to 4 degrees centigrade okay so for at least 5 days so whenever there is increasing of 3 to 4 degrees centigrade of sea temperature then that condition is called as maritime heat wave and according to national oceanic and atmospheric administration which says that so this event that can be lasting for weeks or months or even years so what are the impacts so impact will be there on ocean an increase of 3 to 4 degree centigrade on average temperatures that will be like catastrophe for marine life because whenever there is increasing of ocean temperature or water temperature how the animals will be surviving they will be not surviving so because of this is catastrophic and if you see the example here so this maritime heat waves which happened in this west australian coast in 2010 and 2011 so which caused like devastating of fish fish kills happened that to very sudden and unexpected death of the many fish and other aquatic animals in a very short period of time and this also destroyed this kelp forest this kelp forest is very important from your environment and ecology because what happens whenever there is increased temperature of ocean that will be causing like uh, alteration in this ecosystem of this kelp forest so actually they will be growing in the cool water but if there is any marine heat wave that will be affecting the growth and this is a forest which is providing the habitat and food for marine animals so if this forest is affected automatically marine biodiversity will be get affected and as one is this uh, heating of ocean also leads to oceanic uh, coral bleaching so this happened in 2005 in 2005 high ocean temperature in tropical atlantic and caribbean that led to massive coral bleaching event and corals these are very sensitive to temperature of water which they live and whenever warm water or water is getting warm then they will be expelling this algae called as zooxanthellae and we can see like turning of corals into white this event is called as coral bleaching and this one is even there will be impact on humans so higher ocean temperatures which are associated with this high uh, marine heat waves they can make strong uh, storms like hurricanes tropical cyclones stronger because the first step in the formation of cyclones or hurricanes is low pressure area created so when this low pressure area is created whenever there is high temperature yes or no and next one is it affects the structure of ecosystem so marine heat waves which also influencing the composition of ecosystem by favoring certain species and that will also inhibiting the others so because of this that will lead to imbalance in the biodiversity and even that will also lead to like habitat changes that will be affected biodiversity and even there is increased risk of deoxygenation and acidification so often they occur alongside with the stressors such as ocean acidification deoxygenation overfishing so in those cases there will be like damaging of habitats and even there is increased risk of deoxygenation and acidification okay so these are very important and next one here is the particles that mimic platelets turn traumatic bleeding so here you have to see about the blood cells so this article is important from your science and technology so here in the blood cells we have three types so first one will be red blood cells red cells 
second one is white blood cells okay and next one is thrombocytes thrombocytes are also called as platelets so red cells are also called as erythrocytes okay blood cells are also called as erythrocytes and double bases are called as leukocytes leukocytes and thrombocytes are nothing but platelets so you have to see like different functions for example this red blood cells you are having hemoglobin so because of this hemoglobin presence it is giving the color that cells as red color and the principal function here is it is carrying oxygen to all the cells of the body and wbc is defense function in this wbc also we have monocytes uh, basophils neutrophils like that so they have the function like if any foreign body is entered into our uh, body here so this double bases will be activated and they will be fight okay so it is related to our immune system and the thrombocytes or platelets what they do is if you are having any cut so what happened initially bleeding will happen so after some time what happened you can see the network of cells and stopping of bleeding which happens so stopping of bleeding will happens because of this platelets or thrombocytes so this article says that one micro gel which is used to make the similar type of particles they are mimicking this activity of platelets so here in this image you can see this white color so these are the micro gel so they are imitating or mimicking this platelets okay so that is a study is about so now why it is in use because scientists they have designed artificial ultra soft particles they have artificial ultra soft particles that can mimic blood clotting properties of platelets and they are mainly found in rodents and pigs so whenever they are doing experiments in this rodents and pigs they found that these particles they are mimicking the activity of those platelets and their platelet like particles they offer advantages of traditional platelet infusion because they are longer in shelf life and as well as they are having the very low risk of contamination so this is an advantage and these are the important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper and now let us see this yesterday's newspaper and let us try to see like yesterday's important topics so title says that inflation slowed add to no relief on food bills so here you have to see some dimensions so which are those dimensions always i will be saying about this topic of inflation so inflation is very important concept and it is one of the repeated area where upsc asked question number of times so here you have to understand what is this inflation that is increase of price of goods and service in the market so this condition is called as inflation and here you have to see like types of inflation so we have three types okay cost push next one is demand pull and inbuilt you have to see what are the reasons or what are the causes of inflation and you have to see what is the impact of inflation and you have to see like what is the significance and what are the measures and you have to see what are the measures so in this measures we have cpi and we have wpi clear so all these are very important dimensions and this topic is important from gs paper 3 under your economy yes now let us see this topic in detail why it is in news so if you see this article says that india's retail inflation which is moderated to 10 months low it is now around 4.85 percentage so actually what is the limit is 4 plus or minus 2 that is 2 to 6 percentage we have to maintain inflation in our country so please let me know which committee gave this recommendations of maintaining of inflation of 4 plus or minus 2 percent please let me know don't forget so india's retail inflation is around 4.85 that means within this limit right 
so actually one important issue here is so there is no decreasing of food price cost that is the one challenge that we are facing so inflation for urban consumers which is around 4.8 percentage in february that had been decreased to 4.14 percentage but in rural areas inflation is very high that is around 5.34 percentage that means around 1.2 percentage high when you are comparing with urban areas and rural areas so the trend is visible like the extent of food price rise as well which accelerated and especially because of this there is increasing of inflation and if you see what is this inflation so inflation is defined by imf international monetary fund that is nothing but increase in the prices over a given period of time for goods and services in the market so this is called as inflation and this inflation which reflects rising cost of living so there is increasing of cost of living and even it indicates how much more expensive a set of goods or services is going to be in the future and this one is inflation which is having impact uh, especially because of uh, economic disparities and also because of a large population so what are the impacts of this rising of inflation so first one here is because of inflation my purchasing power is decreasing okay the first one is there is decreased purchasing power okay there is decreasing purchasing of power of my money for example earlier i used to have 10, 100 rupees so with that 100 rupees i can buy like 10 apples but now if you go to market they are not giving even 5 apples for 100 rupees okay so here the purchasing power of 100 rupees is decreasing earlier it used to buy 10 apples but now it can buy only 5 apples that means there is decreasing of purchasing power of money that means the same amount of money individuals they can buy fewer goods and services and next one is if inflation is 5 percentage a product that cost rupees 100 last year would cost 105 this year and there is decreasing of purchasing power that can impact the standard of living so example that i said right so earlier with 100 rupees i can buy like 10 apples but now with the same 100 rupees i can buy just 5 apples that means there is decreasing of purchasing power of money that i am having and next important impact is like increase interest rate and investment so central banks they often respond to inflation by raising interest rates so here whenever there is inflation so here rbi will comes into picture and as well as our government comes into picture so rbi will have monetary policy and government is have fiscal policy so in that fiscal policy government can increase taxes or government can increase spending okay so here interest rate and investment will be getting affected and this one is uncertainty and planning challenges so whenever there is increasing of uh, inflation in unpredictable manner or high then it is going to create uncertainty in the economy so business may find it challenging to plan for the future because prices are constantly changing and next one is it will be also affecting like long term planning and next one is speculative behavior and asset price so inflation can sometimes lead to speculative behavior in financial markets as investors they seek assets that can provide returns exceeding the inflation rate and next one is it is also linked to social and political consequences okay so these are the some important impacts of inflation and next important article was regarding microplastic so here microplastic is very very important concern nowadays because we started using plastic from long period onwards and without plastic there is nothing so even the chair is present and water bottles are present everything which is around me is made up of plastic right so even the phone case that i am using is plastic and it will be <laughs> all time which will be present in our my hand and even if you go anywhere like you will be taking like a water and disposable plastic glasses yes or no okay so plastic became like ubiquitous and a part in our life so not only in a part in our life even our body also we can see the plastic is moving in our blood can you okay can you believe 
Yes, of course. So microplastics had been detected in human blood. So because of this now, it is like a most, most important concern. So here we have to address this microplastics. So here recently IASC researchers, they designed a novel hydrogel and this hydrogel is going to remove microplastics from water. So normally we can use sieves like to filter tea or coffee, we'll be using like sieves, okay. But whenever there are microplastics, so those sieves get, uh, get like blocked with this plastic, we can't remove that. So because of this, we can use this microplastic gel, hydrogel that is going to trap or remove this microplastic. So this is the recent advancement in our science and technology. So why it is in news? So researchers from IAS, that is Indian Institute of Science, they have designed a sustainable hydrogel and this hydrogel is going to remove microplastics from water. So if you see the details, it says that according to IASC, microplastics pose a very great threat to the health because they are very tiny and they can easily enter into our body and even they are entering, in, entering into our bloodstream also, right? So this hydrogel has been designed by the researchers. So this hydrogel which is having a very unique intertwined polymer network and it can bind the contaminants and degrade them using UV light radiation. So because of this, we can try to filter this microplastics from this water. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said. So even we are using like sieves, but they are unsustainable in the long run. So what does this polymer contain? So this polymer contains different layers made up of ketosan, polyvinyl alcohol on, and also polyanilin. So they are intertwined together and they are making an interpenetrating polymer network architecture. So what are these microplastics first of all? So plastic pollution which mainly end up in ocean and finally they deteriorate and they breaks into this microplastics. Okay, so microplastic size will be less than like 5 mm in diameter. And if you see the classification, we have primary and we have secondary. So primary or like tiny particles, they are designed for commercial use. Okay, for clothing purpose like micro beads, plastic fibers, etc. Plastic pellets. And for secondary plastics like uh, breakdown of larger particles like water bottles, etc. That will be generating this microplastics. And next topic is data for better education, a brighter future for students. So this article is very important from your GS paper to under education. Right. So now let us see why it is in news because of Acer report 2023. So if you see this Acer report, Acer it is a national wide citizen led household survey. And this survey which is facilitated by NGO Pratham Education Foundation. Okay. And actually this Acer in this survey, they will be collecting information regarding enrollment in preschool and school for children who are between ages of 3 to 16 years. And they will be assessing children who are between this 5 to 16 years, one to one understanding of their foundation learning and mathematic skills like arithmetic skills whether they are able to solve the simple additions or not and the and this was like acer had been published since 2005 onwards every year and what are the objectives objectives are like they are focusing on especially the children's ability skills like reading skills and problem solving skills analytical skills and the recent survey they set out that overreaching objective of generating evidence on diverse aspects of youth development in rural areas. And what are the key findings of this report? The first one is they said that there is increased enrollment of students in the schools. Okay, so there is overall 86.8 percentage of 14 to 18 year olds. They are enrolled in the education institutions. And this one is occasional training. So youth at college level, they are also most likely to be taking vocational uh, learning like 16.2 percentage and this one is foundation skills about 25 percent of this age group that is 14 to 18 so they still they cannot read standard second second standard level text fluently in the regional language so this is one negative thing and next one is daily life applications so among youth who can read uh, first standard text or more 
about two thirds they can answer at least three out of four questions based on reading and understanding and written instructions and if you're talking about financial calculations of the youth who can do subtractions or more over 60 percentage they are able to do the budget management task and only 30 percent is they can apply discount but only 10 percent is they can calculate repayment so this is also an issue and this one is if you're talking about this digital access about 90 percentage of all youth they have smartphones in their households and they know how to use the smartphones and this one is communication and online safety of all youth who use social media only about half they are familiar with online safety settings and this one is digital tasks so only 70 percentage of youth they can browse the internet to find the answer to the questions so this is some issue and i want to give you one main question it is based on the what are the challenges what are the measures try to write an answer for this question for sure and next topic it is risky premise so it is about asian development bank growth protection already we discussed this topic and again once again we are going to see this topic so why it is in use because india's economic outlook remains robust so this is the thing which said by asian development bank and gdp forecasting rate in 2023 to 2024 is 7.6 percentage okay that is the thing which mainly said and in 2025 to 2026 it will be around 7.2 percentage and if you see the details adb that is asian development bank expects that a retail inflation to ease to 4.6 percentage in this year and 4.5 percentage in the next year so that we have to even focus on decreasing how to decrease this food inflation and next one is uh, this report is says that yes however the risk are persisting because of issues you are going on across the world like Russia, Ukraine crisis or it may be Israel, Palestine issue or Armenia, Azerbaijan issue and West Asian issue. So there may be like increasing of global oil prices and even we are going to have tighter financial conditions. So Indian growth which will be mainly driven by investments and we can improve it by increasing of rural consumption. And we can mute, uh, like we can increase exports and we can decrease the weather shocks, etc. And what is the significance of this report? So this significance part is very important from your mains point of view. So here, whenever you are, we are having this type of growth estimates or growth outputs or prospects, so it can helpful for attracting of investments from other countries and even it will be helpful for overall global economic growth. And apart from that, we can also focus and we can also maintain this economic trajectory that is positive that will be uh, contingent with both domestic and global factors. Okay, so these are the very important current affairs appeared in your yesterday's newspaper. And now we are going to see like Friday's newspaper. Okay, so there are also we are going to see like four topics so first topic it is about adb project and i discussed that in detail in this 13th paper so we're not going to see that once again so only let us see like what is asian development bank that i missed it there so asian development bank it is a multilateral development bank it has been established on 19th december 1966 so if you see this date i never and ever forget this date because 19th December it was the date I lost my father so my father died on that day okay exactly one month before like 19th November it was my birthday and exactly after one month I lost my father yes that was my last happiest birthday yeah okay let's come back and this ADB its primary mission it is to foster economic growth and cooperation okay so its primary mission is to foster economic growth and cooperation among the countries in Asia Pacific region. And if you see the functions of this ADB, so ADB will be assisting the members and partners how by providing loans, by providing technical assistance and by providing grants and equity investments to promote social and economic development. And even it will be providing financing to certain private sector projects 
and even it will be providing finance to public private partnerships okay and even it will be focusing on providing dialogues and as well as advisory services and also it will be co-financing operations will be conducted okay so this is about this topic and next one is most indian believe in plurality say survey so this is again csds lok neeti survey report so please let me know what is the meaning of plurality okay so in the meanwhile i will be having some water so please let me know what is this plurality fast come on students already in 11th video we discussed about this cds lok neeti survey right so now let us see the highlights and pluralism it is one of the important concept that you have to know okay so if you see the context it says that an overwhelming number that is 79% of those who were surveyed under the csds lok neeti poll so they said that india belongs to all religions equally you can see here what a survey said india is belonging to all religions equally there is no religious discrimination and not just hindus but only like 11 percentage says that india belongs to only hindus and please let me know what is your opinion okay so what is this pluralism this pluralism it is a political philosophy it is a political philosophy which is saying that peoples of different beliefs different backgrounds different lifestyles they can coexist in the same society and they can participate equally in the political process so what are the features of pluralism so we have these which we can keep under this uh, features like we have diversity we have tolerance we have non discrimination so we have mutual cooperation we have competition so these are four important features and you have to remember that for sure and next one is fire destroys nearly 100 hectares of vainard sanctuary so whenever there is any sanctuary which is present or any wildlife sanctuary or biosphere reserve or national park is present in use that will be important because every year you will be getting question from biodiversity in your prelims from environment and ecology so this topic which comes under your biodiversity so where is this vainar sanctuary is located very easy tell me how many of you are from kerala okay so answer is kerala so context says that close to 100 hectares of forest were destroyed in the fire in this vainar wildlife sanctuary in kerala so this was like fourth fire incident in this sanctuary because of dried bamboo pods and because of high temperature and there is no summer rain so because of this we are seeing like wildfires so i want to give you one homework you have to see what is this wildfires and you can add some recent examples you have to see like what are the causes what are the disaster management measures we can take because this topic is important from geography environment and disaster management so let us see some facts regarding this vainard sanctuary so it is an integral part of nilagiri biosphere reserve and was established in year 1973 and this nilagiri biosphere reserve it was like the first from india to be included under this unesco designated world network of biosphere reserves and when it came in year 2012 and next one is we are having like mudumalai wildlife sanctuary bandipul national park nagarhol national park mukurth national park and silent valley in this region so this already appeared in 2019 prelim same okay same thing and especially kaveri river which is an uh, important tributary of this river kaveri flows through this it is also very important and we can see like moist deciduous forest and in some areas we have this evergreen forest as well so here if you see so here we have vainard clear and here we have silent valley here we have malabar and here we have idukki periyar neyar okay clear 
and next article it is about Ladakh so this article is talking about one person who is uh, fighting against like environment changes in this Ladakh so this article is very important from your GS paper too and as well as from GS paper channel environment and ecology and even from geography point of view also we can connect this article okay so why it is in news because Sonam Wangchuk you might be knowing about this name right you might have heard somewhere Yes or no? Okay. So Sonam Wang Chok, a climate activist and Ramson Magsasay award winner, announced a 21-day climate fast in Ladakh on March 6, 2024. So because of this is the news. And why? Because Ladakh actually where it is located, it is located in a very important place. Like it is, uh, it is having the neighbors that is Pakistan and China and India. So it is like combination of these three, right? So because of this, it is facing like severe climate change, like floods, dots, landslides, pollution, etc. And actually this region is inhabited by 97 percentage will be tribals. So because of this, you are demanding for even six schedule. So because of this, we are expecting the question from six schedule this year in your films. So if you have not done that, please do revise that. And if you see here, infrastructure development versus environmental concerns which are going on, like despite National Mission for Sustaining Himalayan Ecosystem, so this is focusing on protecting Himalayan region from climate change, rapid infrastructure development, which has occurred in Ladakh because it became a union territory. So mega projects like we are going for building of bridges, roads, tunnels, railways, solar energy initiatives, so there is a fast track development that is going on. So because of it is having like environmental impacts. Okay, so even BRO, National Highways Authorities, Development Corporation Limited. So these projects here like having the impacts on environment and ecology of Ladakh. So if we're talking about history of disasters and action in this Ladakh, Himalayan region, which has witnessed numerous disasters since 2010 onwards. For example, okay, the North floods in 2013 and Silk Yara tunnel collapse in 2023. So they are saying about the half hazard development in this environmentally very, very sensitive regions. And despite warnings from uh, geologists and ecologists, infrastructure projects are continuing without proper risk assessment and safety measures. So it is also one cause of concern. And the recommendations even from this expert committees, they after they often will go uh, go like unnoticed. And because of this, that is causing environmental degradation and loss of life. So these are the some important history regarding disasters and lack of action. So these are the some very important current affairs that appeared in Friday's newspaper that is 12th. Okay, 12th April. So these are very important current affairs that I missed from last two days. And from my side, I want to apologize to you. Okay, so please uh, apologize me for this time. And I don't want to miss any current affairs. So I covered all these three days current affairs in today's class. So that's all for today. And I already shared documents in Telegram channel yesterday itself. So if you want to get this uh, notes of 12th and 13th i shared yesterday morning itself so visit our telegram channel and you can download them so i will show you like where exactly you can get the notes so this is our rathod size classes telegram channel see here yesterday itself i shared 12th and 13th pdfs along with the daily edition of hindu with highlighting the important articles and I will be posting today's notes after once this class get uploaded in YouTube, don't worry. And do join this channel so that you will be getting notes in the PDF format. And next one is I also posted one video that is about how to read Hindu newspaper in multi-dimensional approach. So please watch this video once so that you can understand like how to read hindu and which areas you have to focus and how can you interconnect the subjects if you are a beginner okay and next one is this is our rathor's eyes academy youtube channel don't forget to subscribe to this channel so please do subscribe to this channel so that whenever we are posting video you will be getting updates you will be not missing any interesting knowledgeable video that will help pull in your preparation 
And next one is this is our website Rathor Science Academy website. So Rathor Science is not only providing offline, but even we are providing online prelims come mains foundation course. Okay. So you can take online also. And one more thing is if you are from other state, today morning I got one call from UP and also from Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. So if you are staying in other states and if you want to take offline coaching, so nearby our institute within workable distance so there are many hostels for separately girls and boys so if any assistance needed to search hostel also so we will be helping in that don't worry about the hostel facilities okay so you can come and you can join the course and i will be giving you the personal guidance okay don't worry so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this class if you really like this class hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends also and don't forget to subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.